know what you see on screen is pretty much something normal. Just Luke pulling just a cargo goods train, a random cargo goods train, and me just moaning about the hot weather. No, oh, that's just great. I've only saw that hot air and it's trapped with nowhere to go. I mean, that's not even part of the season in the first place. It's not even, you know, illegal. It's just stupid, man. But anyways, apart from the fact that I'm just moaning about this goddamn British weather, we're going to have heavy rain. Which, oh, well, look at the temperature. This feels more like Christmas time rather than, let's just say, like, you know, May, in a sense, eh, as I'm making this video, eh? Goodness me, eh? But anyways, I'm just going to show you just loads and loads of toys and bonus footage from Lego Ninjago, if we can capture some of it, though without making Lego getting really or mighty angry about their own copyright. But let's start off with our first look up product. Yes, I, um, oh, which one we're going to show you today? Um, obviously all of them, I think, Scott Stones is a bit of a different trend, eh? Okay, our first one is a flip of origami, Flapping Birds, British Wildlife Collection. Yes, it's a British Wildlife Collection, Flapping Birds, flip of origami toy. I can say it in the other way around, eh? It's called an adult wide bodied summer herring girl. Uh, oh, what's that called? Variations, mixed flock and seafront water prey at the Irish Sea 12 pack. 18 pounds. There's a bit of an Irish sort of theme onto that text, eh? There's the back of the packaging there. Looks like, is that like a third summer herring girl though? I often get confused of its third winter, but this is actually a third summer because Obviously though, there's no brown streakings in the head though. It's got a trio of fish which are based on sardine. Just sounding mundane, eh? A couple of shrimp, also known as prawns, as you can see on the brackets though. And we've also got a single place or flatfish. And I'm reviewing up on top of the bed, eh? Because I feel like there's one special item here that I might show you later on. Um, yes, it looks quite nice, eh? Which looks super cool. Obviously, there's a mixed bag of various different stuff there. I'll clear some of the other items away. Overall, I'm just going to show you the fish. You've seen them before, right? Eh? These um, little wishy-washy wash um, toys. And hopefully, I'm just going to perform better than that other toy video I had last week there because I had a fever from the Pfizer vaccine. And also, I've got the camera on top because it's on the bed, which is sounding quite nice there. And also, looks quite good for the fact I don't want Luke taking over my videos on YouTube that culprit though, that green tank engine pulling the long goods train though, that is of course Luke, it's just the same designs of all fish, and there's also a couple of shrimp that look like Clonger, if you remember your Pokemons, Pokemon X and Y I believe so, I give it a bit of a stare, just to give you a bit of a close up eh, that's what it looks like, and here's the other side there, okay, looks quite nice, Looking very, very cool. Same with this one here. Okay, that looks very, very nice. And we've also got a flatfish. How cool is that one, eh? How? Oh, <laughs> it looks like Stunfisk from Pokemon. I mean, just look at the face. It looks like some sort of weird fish or bird that's an update. And I also love the patterns of green, orange, and brown. Man, that looks quite nice, eh? Apart from the fact that the underside isn't detailed, though, which is just stupid and dumb. But it um, looks quite nice for a fish toy like that. How cool is that? I think the last time I had one of these was on an advent calendar. I believe so. During 2020, it was in the New Year celebrations, I believe, though. I uploaded there and I sneezed at the beginning name, which was hilarious, though. But don't get too sad about, about sneezes, though, because, well, you may think sneezes sound funny, but unfortunately, they sound serious. Um, just had another item, though. That was taking over my video though. Uh, this one here is of course just your typical adult herring girl. And um, just similar in detailing of course eh. It's just the same herring girl. And in fact in this video I think we're going to have more herring girls. And strangely enough there are no lesser blackback girl products as I'm making this video though. Strange as it sounds this one here is of course. Okay. Another adult. Just mundane you know, in terms of its design, eh? and it's also very typical of what a British Eastside Seagull would normally look like, though. And I've also got um, 
apart from the adults though, we've also got sub-adults. Particularly well known for their brown streakings on the wings though. And also the black tail end, which is quite interesting though. And it's called the sub-adult herring girl, obviously though, which is quite interesting though. Obviously if it had the um, brown streakings on the head, it would have made it like, you know, a sub-adult herring girl. Or should I say winter sub-adult herring girl though, same with this one here. You know, they're actually not so detailed though, those birds though. And uh, they're actually getting increasingly common for the fact that I often not just see them, but also hear them. But um, yes, with that particular long cause. And the long calling sort of herring girl sound, it's something to signal boundaries though, or to mark its territory though, as I said before though. This is the third summer herring girl, as it says there. Looks very, very nice. It's got those big black wing tips though, like you would find on the juveniles. And it's also got a black tail end, like so, which looks pretty cool, eh? And it might be also to put the camera down there because there's something really special. In fact, I've got two special items here that are waiting on the wings, no pun intended. And this is another, yes, I've already covered that one, a sub adult though. And if I show you this, I've actually got two of these third summer herring girls. Hooray! Okay, so I think that's about it though. Um, yes, I'm not going to show you the sub adults again though because there's pretty much you know, a bit of time to think of, eh? And not, not only that though, um, I'm just going to throw that, put it over here though. Okay, you're done. Okay, moving on along, I'm just going to go ahead and take a look at another herring girl product. It's a herring girl parental rivalry and fishing feeding frenzy 12 pack. And it costs about £14.99 or £15. Um, doesn't sound dirt cheap to me. Ooh, it comes with special monkfish, which are like anglerfish. And it comes with four small fish, which are based on sardines, which look like that. And I'm just going to unpack them what they look like, though. For obvious reasons, though. Let's take them out. And uh, I'm just going to flap this one here. Often mistaken this one here as a juvenile, but this bird is actually classified as a second winter herring girl. If I flip over there, and if I show you like so, that's what they would normally be called, though. And look at that. Flat, 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 flat. Pretty cool, eh? Ooh, a bit of a wing slap action there. And we've also got the adults. Look at that. Just the same adult herring girls that we often see in the seasides and whatnot, though. Like, you know, Western Supermare, Eastbourne, Margate, Wallasey, Swansea, whatever. You name every single seaside town across the UK, and um, they're everywhere. But um, yeah, it's actually quite nice seeing a lot of herring girls. I think the last time I've ever seen a herring girl actually though was in Swanshurst Park. There was actually a pair of them just signalling their boundaries doing their long cars, which is very very nice. And in this product, we only not just get those uh, sardines. If I don't show you the shot, oh my goodness me, I think you said shark, didn't I, though? If I showed you the shot, oh my goodness me, I did this twice again, eh? But um, yeah. If I didn't show you the sardines, people are just going to say, Ah, oh, but Ivan, you didn't show us the sardines. Well, there they are. And also, oh wow, that looks quite interesting, eh? I'm just going to be very careful as I'm looking at these fishies carefully and whatnot now. And also, specially enough, we've also got two of those monkfish, which are also known as anglerfish because they've got, well, it looks like to be... If I take a look at the back of the packaging though, that's what they would normally look like. They look like the anglerfish seen in Finding Nemo. Okay, though, that scary part there in the movie there, alongside the shark. Obviously, the one thing about these guys is that they have got, like, an unrealistic, non-glow-in-the-dark, luminescent fin ray, which looks like that, which are also known as their escars. But, before we can continue this video, I think that product looks good, eh? There's something really awesome that I might show you as I'm repacking this toy. And, um, I think that product's not too bad, eh? I do love the brown and black colorization on those monk fishies, eh? And I've tried them before, it sounds delicious, eh? In those fishies, eh? It looks so, so amazing, isn't it, eh? Really, really awesome! So, the camera was going a bit funny there as I'm putting the birds away, as I'm looking away, because I want to show you one of the best scenes ever, though, as I'm watching on YouTube. And there you go, that product is done, but before I can do that, though, I'm going to show you something really, really hilarious today. Right on camera. 
Okay, I'm just gonna turn straight forward. Alright then. Tuning, tuning, tuning. Oh yes, I'm gonna show you one of the greatest scenes of Ninjaga! Hooray! Yeah, the Epic Ultra Dragon's gonna... Oh, yes! I don't know why I'm showing you again now, but that's one of the biggest things I'll have to show you in my flip up toy views. Yes, the Skull Drucks Witch has attached and coupled onto the Epic Dragon's leg, or should I say the Ultra Epic Dragon's leg, and made Lloyd Garmadon, who looks like Link from The Legend of Zelda, but a ninja. No, not that guy, though. But, um, the Lord Garmadon I'm talking about is this one here. And guess what? He's basically Link from The Legend of Zelda, but ninjagified. Alright, without being a bit too intense, I'm just going to go ahead and continue making this video. Alright, you are... Okay, I'm just going to calm myself down now, because this part here is done and dusted. Alright. Oh, it's gone inside the train box. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Alright, let's move on to another flip flap product. Once again, we're taking a look at Herring Girls. £18.95. It's got the late and early wintering Adol and Sub Adol Herring Girl flock and Crustacean Seashore. Oh, it just got myself a bit sick though. Uh, Wave Feast. Yes, it's called the Crustacean Seashore Wave Feast 12 pack. As I have to say, really carefully though. £18.95. And it looks really cool if I take a look at the back there. They look really awesome, really, really awesome at all times, baby, eh? Really awesome indeed! Oh yes! And then, um, we've got, look, I'm pretty sure this looks like a sub out of Herring Girl, because there's no black tail end. But to me, it also has assets of a second winter Herring Girl, though, because it's got a pink beak and a... Um, it also looks like a third winter Herring Girl, though, from like, the early part of winter, January and February or December for that ma that matter. It's also got a black beak tip though. And this product it comes with two uh, edible crabs, base crabs. It also comes with a couple of prawns, or shrimps, we're going to call them, eh? And you also got a couple of blue lobsters. I've seen them before, eh? And uh, we've also got these seagulls though, with those brown streakings on the heads though. And what though, which looks quite nice though, eh? But there's actually an error on one of the sub out herring girls today. But anyways, here's a typical wing beat of a herring girl. And once again, people are going to get annoyed of me just saying, Mine, 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 mine. You know, that's what they would often do. Especially in Finding Nemo, I said, I would always chase Nigel the Pelican who tries to rescue. Who, oh, actually, they're trying to find their son Nemo. Obviously, Marlin's son Nemo, though. And this one here is a wintering herring girl, though. It's a sub out of and I can tell it's a sub adult because it's got that there, okay, these wings have got like a combination of grey and brown if you look closely though but because it's called a wintering it should have had got some sort of brown streaking on the head though that's something I often mistake about these birds, I should have just put them up you know, before I make this video, eh, at the beginning though, maybe I should have put those brown streakings in the head though after I've made this video, eh, but it uh, looks quite interesting, eh um, yeah, once again, it's a wintering herring girl, though. It's an adult because there's no brown streakings on the wings, though, compared to the sub adults, though. And this one here is another sub adult herring girl, though, which has got assets of a second winter herring girl, but it actually hasn't got that much brown on it, though. As you can tell straight forward, there's not much brown, but it still retains the dark moon, oh, I think it's called the dark maroon, sort of reddish burgundy eye wing. Okay, it's also got a brownish sort of iris though. It's got a pink beak and a black tip. Looks quite nice. It's like in the black tail of a juvenile or a second winter herring girl. Maybe an early third winter herring girl in January and February. Maybe March. And here we have another sub other herring girl though because it's got a black tail end. And once again, something really disappointing about this toy. There's no brown streakings in the head though. But lucky enough, it still has the brown streakings on the wings though. Very, very nice. And we've also got a couple of crabs, which are... I think these crabs are a lot much more better than, pre than previous crabs I did though, because they've got like yellow... They're actually made with yellow paper and whatnot though, which looks quite nice and cool, eh? Got a couple of orange ones, which look quite nice, eh? And yeah, it looks super amazing. Super, super amazing indeed. We've got those fancy looking eyes. Here's the other side, eh? did some exercising for at least around 61 minutes and um, yes and also it's my second time doing 
this video though, I actually, uh, I don't know what I'm saying here, but this video took many, many times, so I was going to be doing it around 9 o'clock though, but then all of a sudden, after I've noticed that my breakfast is ready, well, I just couldn't even do it right though. And I didn't have time as well though, because breakfast was quite early there, and I should have shot at this, you know, a little bit much more early, let's say 8 o'clock though. But yet again, it'll be too complex though, because I have to contend with the differences and what I have to deal with now. There's lobster here. And I'm not sure if you can see the eyes on the lobster here. Doesn't look that lobster -y though, maybe it does. For the fact that it looks blue. Obviously, um, lobsters are blue when they're alive though, but when they're cooked, they just turn red. Okay, I'm just going to put the prawns back though. Now, I'm not sure about today though, um, but obviously if I'm eating something different today, I'm deciding not to make any bird products today because of the way I'm changing and the way I sort of eat though these days though. Okay, that product is done and dusted. Okay, you're done. And once again, I think I've reviewed this toy though, but um, yes I have now. Okay, dusted. Now let's move on to another Fifth Life Origami Flapping Birds toy. Which is this one here. I actually made this one last week though, it's called the English Magpie Pigeon Exhibition Flock 12 Pack. £17.50. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I'll be making any more of these pigeon toys. And it's quite interesting that um, I was supposed to be making like birds from like Central and Eastern Europe. But then, no, because I've already seen different breeds, yes, different breeds of birds though, from different parts of the world though. And also many pigeon breeds are very strange shapes though. Quite strange whenever I think about these types of birds though. Okay, I'm just going to unpack them. And they actually come in two different colour variations. There's a couple of green ones though, with grey and black. And there's also some brown ones here, although both of them have got like um, pink beaks and pink irises as well as the eye ring, but the eye ring is red though actually, eh? Looks quite nice that wing beats of an English magpie pigeon. And also at the back of the packaging, please don't get confused with magpies, as magpies are corvid type birds. It's just the name of a pigeon that sort of looks like a magpie. It's just a pigeon that looks like a magpie obviously though. You know? Any sort of colours, black or should I say grey green and dark green combined together, eh? it looks quite nice though looks like an iridescent plumage though and um, is this one here is a brown coloured one here with a pink beak and there's a, once again we've got the red eye ring here and the pink eye ring as well therefore it looks nice and uh, looks quite nice though, there's another pigeon here as well flat 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 and it's quite interesting I think I think by the end of this year though, we will have the largest number of pigeons ever recorded though. Ooh, click, 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 click. Awesome. Uh, luckily enough, I'm not going to film Luke the Freight Steam Train, or Cargo Train as I'm showing you though, because obviously, um, you know, obviously he's going to take over the, you know, over the video though, if I filmed it right down there. But therefore, um, yeah, it looks quite nice actually, though, those pigeons, eh? Uh, I don't know how sloppy these are. Looks like it's got a bit of an. It's a bit of a very weird sloppiness there on that eye, though. Should have looked for the actual mistakes. Well, I can see a bit of. Yeah, I can see there's a bit of overspraying, though. It actually looks like a knockoff. Whenever I see toys being done with overspray, it's a little bit like a knockoff toy. You know, those Chinese knockoff toys and fake ones you go to there. The ones that easily break off though. And here's another green one there. In fact, we've got six of these though. Sometimes the eyes aren't right there, and sometimes, you know, the model is in terms of the way they've been designed, the wings look crooked and whatnot though. And I'm actually starting to feel almost tired, but I shall not give up because obviously, if I do feel tired, well, that's not going to help though. And not only that, but I've just exercised for at least around 61 minutes. And my goodness me, I, I don't know how. How wet is it going to be like though today? Well, I can tell you what, it's actually quite blustery today outside though. But um, yeah, it's actually not too bad though. But looks it's quite sunny, but I don't know how much rainfall we're going to have though. I bet it's going to rain in the evening section, maybe like in the afternoon. Perhaps so. 
Uh, obviously, they're just the same pigeons, though. You know what? I'm just going to repack all of them, though, because it's going to take a long time on just flapping all those goddamn pigeons and just wasting so much time on doing, you know, stuff which is quite, you know, very, very irregular. Obviously, though. And I'm just going to put the pigeons away. And obviously, I've just turned the Christophe Origami Flapping Birds pigeon put it away there because obviously it's, you know, I don't know why I sort of turn the camera away there. I just leave the camera alone and just put the products away there. But there you go, that product is once again done and dusted. Okay, we've nearly evolved the flip flap products being home and hose. I'm going to show you. Oh, some flip flap origami dinosaurs. It's of course costing seven pounds. But look at the logo; it's in a different shade of yellow. And also this saw part here. It's also its tail looks like it's rised upwards. So it's horizontal instead of vertical. Though it's sort of strange, eh? Whenever I see it, though, might be making more dinosaur toys. It's called the Ceratopsian Dinosaur Species and Color Variations Five Pack. Looks quite nice, though. Maybe that's a common feature of these toys. Making dinosaur products day, you know, in late spring and towards like midsummer day when it gets real too hot day. There you go, there's the back of the packaging there. Comes with five Ceratopsian dinosaur toys, and it's also based on Ceratopsian dinosaur species, which look quite amazing, eh? All named respectively to their specimen names, and they come in five different color versions apart from the fact they're in different species. So, what do we have? We've got a Zuni Ceratops, Triceratops, an onion sauce, and on the front of the packaging we've got like a set of protoceratops, and we've got a stuacosaurus, and I'm pretty sure stuacosaurus means spiked lizard. In Latin, when you can, whenever you start to think about paleontology, that's what they're called. So let's start off with triceratops, obviously first though, because this one's pretty much the most obvious out of all ceratopsian dinosaurs, it's also the most relevant and most recognised of all dinosaurs like that, for the fact it's a rival of T1, oh sorry, Tyrannosaurus Rex, or T-Rex, as I just said before, eh? I was going to say it, if though, but I didn't. But looking enough, it's a bit of a bluish-greenish sort of toy, though, with stripes on it, though. Making it a bit dinosaur-y, if that's a word. <laughs> it's also got red on the top, though, and its head. Hopefully it's not blood. And also the eyes are brown. It's got a beak on the front, though, with its smiley-looking face, though. It's also got a horn in the middle, though, with a couple of horns poking at the front. Looking nice though, and obviously enough, there's its name, Triceratops, with its button tail being shown. Hopefully it's not actual mooning though. If it is, I think this video would literally go down into the age-restricted sort of, how would you call it, category, I would say, eh? Anyways, moving right along, this is Storacosaurus. Unlike Triceratops, the horns aren't pointing right in front, they're actually pointing right behind, and actually facing like so, eh? And, as you can see, it's also got a horn-like triceratops in the middle though. And whenever you think about this ceratopsian dinosaur, it looks really awesome though. It's a bit of iffiness though. The paints have gone a bit sloppy though. It's not the bestly produced of all dinosaurs, but it looks quite cool, eh? And, um, obviously it's got a brown tail. It's got like a colour combination of orange and brown and grey as well. It's got a bulky looking toy. Well, not really though. It looks quite bulky looking actually though. It's also got the name Stuacosaurus. Yeah, it actually doesn't look too bad, eh? And also we've got, like, an Arniosaurus. Actually, that Stuacosaurus has got a red evil eye, though. Then we grab Arniosaurus, which is that green one that looks like Triceratops. But instead, for the fact that, once again, like Stuacosaurus, its horns are poking backwards. And it's got a couple of yellow horns there. And it's also got a yellow horn in the middle, which looks like that. Quite interesting though, and we've also got like a very weird darker green on the other side, whereas the whole dinosaur looks like it's pretty much lime green. It's got a pair of yellow, or sorry, oh sorry, it was actually orange eyes. Sorry, I get confused though. And most importantly, it's bum though, it says Arniosaurus. Or should I say Arniosaurus? It's quite a very nice looking bulky dinosaur though. Obviously, Ceratopsian dinosaurs look like a Bug-dyed rhinoceros. Maybe not though, more like a reptilian version of the rhinoceros. Pretty awesome, mate. Eh? And then we've got Zuniceratops, 
which looks like that. Once again, it looks like a Triceratops, but smaller and lacks. Actually, it doesn't have the front horn of a Triceratops in the middle, though. And it's also got a pair of horns on either side. Two sides, though. Make sure I can see it through the camera, though. Looks like a charging, raging bull with a parrot's face. But in reptilian style, it looks pretty cool. And also for the fact that whenever I think of heads like that, it looks like a parrot. You know, they've got beaks like that. Because they're herbivores. And obviously, you know, it looks very similar to what a parrot is there. And there's actually a dinosaur called Sotacosaurus. And they're based on parrots. With dinosaur attributes onto them, eh? They're just dinosaurs with parrot-like designs, eh? Here goes Zuniceratops. Okay, so that's a very nice looking design, and last but not least, is... Ooh, Protoceratops! Pretty much like the main, what would you say, the main rival, it's like Triceratops against Tyrannosaurus Rex. This guy here, Protoceratops, is the smallest Ceratopsian dinosaur, and it also means first, um, I'll just say it, horn face. Ceratopsian means horn face, obviously, eh? And whenever you think about Protoceratops, it doesn't have any horns like Triceratops though, but instead it actually has a very pronounced bump on its head though. And also for the fact, because it's a Ceratopsian, it's also got a parrot like beak at the front though. And its rival is of course Velociraptor, because its fossils are found in the same place as Velociraptor. Mongolia or China, it's also got a very nice big black eye, and they're not googly, because it's, you know, pretty much drawn by hand. But what this Dinosaur actually reminds me of, it actually reminds me of a Pokemon called Shieldon, which is a ground type dinosaur Pokemon, eh? It's a fossil Pokemon. And wow, we eh? Woo! I didn't realize I made a dinosaur that's designed up to a Pokemon, eh? That is superb. Very beautiful, eh? I should make more of these, eh? In fact, I've got another product based on those ones, eh? Which will be fantastic. Okay, I think we've got dinosaurs at the end, but. Speaking of dinosaurs, we've got one to contend with, and that's Dromosaurus Theropod Grandalicus, because I've got the Legend in Jago, how would you say it? TV show. The season 2 4 episodes I need to contend with. Okay, that product there is once again done and dusted. Oh yeah! So, I'm gonna show you something really nice though. As I'm thinking of Lego, how about doing stuff that looks like something out of Lego Star Wars? And may the 24th be with you? No, because last year was horrible though. But anyways, I'm going to show you this one here. It is a... Ooh, I think it's a... I've made my, um... Yeah, Lego stuff before, eh? But, um, luckily enough, I don't play a lot of Lego though, because I just think Lego is not that technological enough and motorized enough as that train there. But, um, I think what I would call this, it's literally called the C-Wing or the U-Wing though. CU wing because it's in the shape of a letter C or a letter U. Uh, what I like about this spaceship, it's got eyes in it though, which look quite amazing there. It's also got um, a gun tower at the top there where you can store stuff inside. It's got some stabilizers at the back there which says FFSR. It's quite a nice looking spaceship though, obviously. And uh, I love the fact it's also got an eye, got a pair of eyes in it though. It just looks like an angry spaceship. And obviously, because it's called the C wing there or the U wing there. It's got that fantastic shape on it though. Love the fact it's got colours on each side though. And also those sections here. And I've also loved the fact they've got those rocket boosters on that section of the spaceship. Which would probably mean that this could possibly be thinking I would actually think that this would be this, the fastest spaceship in all of Flip Flap. And FFSR stands for Flip Flap Space Rebels. Because whenever I think of Star Wars, you've got the Galactic Empire and the Rebellion. Or the Rebels, as I would call it, eh? Also, there's also another rocket booster at the back there with a couple of windows as well. Also, it's got those um, two Gatling guns on the front there. This is boy heaven. Even a 70s person would be very impressed uh, of this toy. It looks so, so cool. Really, really nice. And i got to tell you what, it looks so futuristic for a spaceship. It almost looks like a horseshoe, or I don't know. Looks very, very nice. Once again, I love the rocket thrust boosters in the back there, even that section here as well. That looks quite nice as well. 
But before I can continue and move on to something else, I'm going to show you. Ooh, hang on. I'm going to show you the dinosaur. Oh, yes. Oh, oh sorry, Lego, for showing you freaking minifigures. Oh, look at this. It's Dromosaurus, the Bogonjalicosaurus. Look at that. Rawr. All right. Let's move on to something pretty much more realistic and modern looking now. Something to work. You know, something really nice there and something really nice there. Oh, sorry. Actually, no, it's my computer. It's got a bit funny there, eh? But um, anyway, so I'm going to show you. Well, pretty much really, really awesome there. Uh, that's sending two in and there. Anyways, this spaceship is done. Anyways, I could just set up with some rough landings as well. In fact, I can give this thing a fly, just thankfully I'm not a pilot. Oh, it's crashed, it's crashed! But anyways, I can see something really cool at the bottom now. Remember I did the bus? The bus, the Peacock's um, bus, the Peacock bus's um, bus, which was designed after a right Eclipse bus. Well, guess what? I made a dump truck, and let me show you, this isn't actually fake, it's real. Da -da 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 -da. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a dump truck, and look at this, it's so cool, eh? And it's like one of those dump trucks, it's quite derpy looking, well it's not really that derpy looking because the eyes pretty much reminiscent to that of the Disney film Cars. Looks like Mac, I believe so. And obviously on the sides here, look at that, it's called, oh wow, it's quite nice though, it says Gibson, yes it says Gibson Construction BOC Propriety Limited. Does that mean that company is British and Australian? I can't remember, eh? And obviously his name is called Frederick Gibson Conway though, the rigid um, Freightliner Tipper Cascadia 126 dump truck. Oh, pardon me, eh? I believe it's a very popular truck there in America though. As trucks are normally shaped like this with that streamlined body design though. And what's quite funny is, is that the wheels are actually a lot more smaller and wider than the other truck. I mean, what the truck? What the truck is going on? I mean, crikey, this looks really awesome, eh? I love the colours into this truck, though. And for the fact it's so lemony and yellow looking, though, this makes it a very cool looking truck if you're playing construction stuff, though. If you're doing some construction roles, it's a very nice vehicle. Even though the vehicles are not that correct, though, there's a bit of an offset, though, and the dump truck, though, it still looks quite nice, though. I love the headlights, though. Also, the tail lamps at the back, though. You've got GC. Logos which look like that, which stands for Gibson Construction, and obviously the brand actually was pretty much it's a fictional brand. Now I've actually created all by myself, and pretty much with that being said, um, yeah, normally it's based on the dog and tipper sort of truck there because you will normally have another trailer right behind this truck there, and you would couple next to the trailer, and you would obviously tip both the trailer and the dump truck with their boxes like so. Once again, you can just put something inside there and you can just unload all the good stuff from the back of this dump truck and also the best thing about this tool is it's also got a stick on it yeah I love that mechanism mind you boys love it once again I love the exhaust pipes but I think this one here looks like it's starting to fall apart on my hand so that that one there okay so I'll definitely so I'm about to add some more super glue on this one after you know making this video eh because I don't think it will be lasting that long eh but I love the blue windows on each side, but I also love the fact that there's also a couple of back windows which look like that too. Amazing! And we've also got a barcode which looks like that. I mean, crikey's man, that's so amazing! And once again, we've got things like that, which um, look like that. And we've also got tyres which look like the um, the green, I would just say, was it the Vauxhall Viva or the Screamers Viva car that I had a look at, eh? Very cool, eh? Really, really cool. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I love the back though, the tail lamps and the GC sort of logos at the back though. It's so, so nice. It's a hard working looking vehicle though. I mean, any child who ever saw that toy will be screaming. Um, well, obviously, whoever loves truck toys, that's amazing. And if I give you a comparison between this truck versus the other truck there, Kenny the Kenworth. Manning Freight Truck! Look at that! This is so amazing! And if I show you a comparison here, it's got a much more streamlined sort of sort of bonnet or hood though, it's just in that sort of colour eh? And uh, once again, they're about the same length, but um, the wheel arrangement 
is actually a lot much more different. This one's much more like that though. Whereas this one here, if I bring it next to you, eh, it's actually a lot much more different. The wheel sets are a little bit distant, whereas this one here is a little bit closer. Well, quite amazing, eh, on how trucks are designed in a very different way, eh, and um, that's very nice to see. Trucks being designed in a very fantastic way. That's very amazing, eh? And I also love the um, uh, the top of the cab, which looks very nice. It's a day cab truck. I presume this one here might be a sleeper truck. I don't know, but um, yeah, that actually looks fantastic, eh? That sort of day cab dump truck. Love the tipping action and whatnot, though. And this is actually um, obviously when I made that dump truck, though, behind the scenes of this one here, this was actually first produced around sometime in mid or late April, though. And obviously I was getting very impatient there, so I had to swap with the axles for the Rods Eclipse Peacock Buses bus. So I had to swap with the axles for that bus though. And then, with that being said, however though, I started to make the truck. And I'll tell you what, making that truck wasn't really that hard of all, right? And it looks super cool! Love the, um, bluish greenish eyes. Never seen that on a Disney Pixar's cast sort of character, eh? It looks quite cool, eh? That's very, very nice. Well, I can tell you what. Looking at those trucks here, especially that new dump truck there, is super fantastic. I mean, who would ever, you know, pretty much wants to see a dump truck like that though? It looks pretty cool. I don't want to fidget too much with the exhaust pipes though, because they'll fall apart with me though. But uh, nevertheless, this video really, you know what, has been pretty much so exciting now. I mean, look at Luke chopping along with his uh, truckload full of good stuff. I would say good wagons and tops and trucks and whatnot though. And yes, something really nice to finish the video. Oh yes, the revenge of good Dalekosaurus. Let's take a look at the dinosaur without seeing some of those Lego Ninjago minifigures. Otherwise Lego is going to sue me for this. Please Lego, don't sue me for this. Don't sue me for this. I beg you. Oh yeah. Anyways. I hope this video has literally, um, I would just say it though, that video has gone chronically for, you know, pretty much too long though. But anyways, if you really enjoyed this video though, without showing, oh my goodness me, how am I gonna show you the dinosaur quickly though? Without showing the dinosaur too much though, I can tell you what, if you really have enjoyed this video though, without being too rough and ready again, oh, it's got mucus on it though. Please enjoy, you know, everything on my content day. Or should I say, please give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Couldn't even speak well because I'm just turning up the volume just to hear the grunt sounds. This dinosaur really is aggressive towards Ninja and he really wants to eat them. But we're not going to show that one, eh? Don't you? Because it's Kitty's YouTube. Anyways, please give this video a... Um, I'm just going to turn the volume down. Good likes for that one, eh? Please give this video a good like and subscribe for more. YouTube content onto my channel and as always thanks so much for watching of all the Pokemon hosters there on the water and bye for now